Being legally blind is a different experience for every patient. So what exactly is the definition of legal blindness? In this episode of OcuTalk, Dr. Alexa Heck will be talking us through legal blindness and other low vision conditions, how the testing process works, and potential measures that can be taken to prevent low vision conditions that can lead to legal blindness. Dr. Hecht? I want to talk to you. Not now, later. No, now. My name's Nick, and today we have a very special guest joining us. Please welcome Dr. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for a brand new episode of OcuTalk. My name's Nick, and today we have a very special guest joining us, a returning guest to OcuTalk. Everyone, please welcome Dr. Alexa Hecht. Dr. Hecht, thank you so much for joining us again. Thank you so much for having me. Well, thank you for joining us. We know you're very busy, so we appreciate you coming back on with us. Thanks again for joining us. Uh, so before we actually get started, Dr. Hecht, uh, do you mind maybe introducing yourself to our audience for those who weren't able to see you the last time you were here? For sure. So my name is Dr. Hecht. I'm practicing in Toronto, Ontario, and I practice at a couple different primary practices, um, specializing in a, a bit of dry eye, a bit of myopia control. Um, yeah, and I'm just learning along the way. Well, again, thank you for the introduction. And again, thank you for joining us on OcuTalk. Uh, so for our discussion today, we were actually hoping that maybe you can talk to us a little bit about uh, the topic of legal blindness and kind of the misconception people have over it and, and what that exactly means. So what exactly does it mean to be legally blind? Yeah. So first, I feel like we should clear a few things up about what blindness means. Many people think that blindness means total darkness, but the, the term blindness can cover a wide spectrum of visual disabilities. So there's many different causes of blindness. Um, for example, AMD or macular degeneration creates distortion, distortion or a blind spot in the central vision, whereas things like glaucoma or retinitis pigmentosa impacts the peripheral vision. Um, other conditions like nystagmus affect depth reception and coordination, but legal blindness is defined by law to limit activities such as driving and to determine whether someone is um, eligible for disability related government programs and benefits. So the, the proper definition of being legally blind is when visual acuity is 2200 or less in the better eye correction and or visual field of 20 degrees or narrower. Well, fantastic information, Dr. Heck. Thank you so much. And uh, so what are the biggest mis misconceptions that people have over the terminology legally blind? Yeah. And so this is what my TikTok video is about where a lot of people will, will refer to themselves as legally blind when they aren't wearing their glasses or contacts. But this is just a, a misunderstanding. Like I mentioned, people may also think this refers to complete blindness or no visual detection of light, but you're really not considered legally blind if your visual acuity can be corrected to better than 2200 with glasses or contact lenses. Oh, well, that, that, that clears it up for it then. <laughs> we appreciate it, Dr. Heck. Uh, so how common is it? Is it more common like in children or, or is it common in adults? How, how common is this? Yeah. So I'll give you some statistics because it's all in the numbers. Um, an estimated 1.1 million Americans are legally blind, but 12 million people 40 and above suffer from some visual impairment. As of 2012, 4.2 million Americans age 40 years and older suffer from uncorrectable visual impairment. And this number is expected to double by 2050. So I'm sure it's gone up since 2012, um, just due to things like diabetes and other chronic diseases that are affecting our population. The leading cause of blindness and low vision in the US are primarily age-related diseases such as AMD, cataracts, glaucoma, diabetic retinopathy, things like that. And then going over to children, approximately approximately 6.8% of children younger than 18 years have been diagnosed um, with eye and vision conditions. Um, and then nearly 3% of children younger than 18 are blind or visually impaired. Definitely more common in adults and, and especially the aging population. So Dr. Hecht, uh, thank you for that information. Those are very staggering numbers. Uh, so one question I did have was, uh, 
Are there any preventative measures someone can uh, do to prevent being legally blind? I, I don't know if that's a, a great way to ask that question, but I wanted to kind of ask and see, is there some things that we can do to help our, help ourselves? I mean, of course, you can't prevent some types of blindness. Uh, things like retinitis pigmentosa that you're born with or other other diseases that you get diagnosed with that have already affected the eye to such an extent. But there are some things we can do to prevent it from getting that far, especially in these diseases like macular degeneration and diabetes. So getting your eyes regularly examined, you know, things like glaucoma and macular degeneration might not have symptoms right away at the beginning. So early detection is really key. Other conditions like diabetic retinopathy can have rapid progression. So maintaining good glucose control, uh, getting regularly checked with your PCP and your optometrist is important. And then of course, things like protecting your eyes from the sun, wearing proper sun protection, eating well and exercising, stop smoking. You have a three to four times more likelihood of getting AMD if you are a smoker. And then things that, you know, we might not even think about every day, but eye safety, wearing proper eye protection, taking care of your contact lenses, which I talk about a lot, but that is one that's really important. So yes, of course, there's some uncontrollable diseases that cause blindness as well, but these are some preventative measures for. Well, that's definitely great information, Dr. Hecht, and thank you for that. And uh, so Dr. Hecht, uh, I wanted to ask, what are some signs that uh, we can be on the lookout for them that maybe we, we could be starting to become legally blind? Yeah, this is also a tough question just because, of course, it affects everyone differently and people will have different symptoms. But some common ones, I guess, would be things like cloudy vision, Ill inability to see shapes or people's faces, poor night vision, uh, tunnel vision with glaucoma and things like that. And then, of course, there are other other things like, you know, contrast sensitivity, even color blindness. Um and glare and contrast, like I mentioned. So, so different, different things, depending on what kind of condition you have. Fantastic. And so how, how is this diagnosed in your office? Like, how do you, what tests do you, do you run to help you diagnose something like this? Yeah. So there's really two main ways that you are diagnosed as being legally blind. The first would be the measure of visual acuity. So just to touch on visual acuity, a person with 20-20 vision can see what an average individual can see on the Snell and eye chart, which is the eye chart we use when they're standing 20 feet away. Someone who is legally blind, when their best corrected visual acuity is 2200 in the better eye, meaning they need to be at least 20 feet away to see something that a person with normal vision can see from 200 feet away. I know that's a mouthful. <laughs> um, so basically what that means is someone who is legally blind with 2200 vision sees objects about one tenth as sharp as someone with 2020 vision. And then the second way is measuring someone's visual field or peripheral vision, which is what we do with a visual field test. Um, field is almost 180 degrees. And then vertically, it's about 135 degrees. You're considered legally blind if you have a visual field of 20 degrees or less. So this is essentially tunnel vision. Well, excellent information there, Dr. Hecht. And so We've, uh, we, we've, we've realized the symptoms that we had, we've come to you, you've diagnosed us. So what now are, are the, what's the protocol? Like what's the possible treatment options that we have available? Uh, and can this be corrected? Yeah. And like most of my answers, it totally is dependent on what's causing the vision loss. So for example, cataract surgery, if you have cataracts, that's a really, I, I would say, easier fix, um, which can correct someone to 2020 vision if they are considered legally blind with their cataracts. But unfortunately, some forms of blindness can't be treated that easily. And so in the instances, we're working on uh, rehabilitation and teaching you to use your remaining vision to the best of your ability. So enhancing the visual functioning to improve your quality of life. So we might send you to low vision services, or a, a rehab, low vision rehab, um, to teach you how to use low vision devices, low vision training and therapy and things like that. Well, fantastic. Thank you for that, Dr. Heck. And so what do you recommend as far as um, eye care regimen uh, for those who, who, are, who may be legally blind? Is it the same uh, for everyone yeah. who may not be? So 
there are optometrists who specialize in low vision uh, diagnosis and will perform a full low vision exam, which your primary eye care optometrist might not not do. So it'll go through things like family history and eye history and daily tasks and activities you want to be able to perform. Um, they also will screen for things like depression and mental health issues that might come with low vision and then evaluate things like glare, contrast sensitivity, and then they'll come up with a rehabilitation plan based on your visual abilities and your goals. And then of course there's government programs and private programs that offer educational and vocational counseling, occupational therapy and rehab training and, and so many more resources out there. Um, I just listed a couple there. Well, excellent. Excellent. Dr. Heck, thank you so much. And, um, so I know, um, I, I wanted to ask, uh, are there any new technologies or developments, whether it be on the legally blind uh, field or any, uh, maybe the eye care horizon that we should probably be on the lookout for? Yeah. So just to mention a few, I mean, AI is becoming increasingly more popular these days, but there was, there is an app called Sting AI from Microsoft and that uses um, the device camera to identify people and objects. And then the app will audibly describe those objects and people with visual impairment. There's also eSight, which is amazing. It's a wearable kind of eyepiece that defines and enhances the remaining eyesight you have. So some people are candidates for that. Of course, it's very expensive, but there are some programs that can help you out. There's OrCam, which translates text and images into audio. And then some of the newer therapies uh, being developed are stem cell therapy, which is, I think it's going to be on the rise and is currently on the rise and uh, lots of kind of trials with, with that. So exciting things, I think. Well, very exciting things and very technology is always growing every day. So that's pretty sure. amazing. Uh, so Dr. Heck, before we uh, leave today, was there anything else that you'd like to let our audience know about? Yeah. I mean, I think I touched on a lot of things. I think uh, being legally blind is kind of a different experience for everyone, especially depending on whether you're diagnosed later in life or earlier in life. And I think I just always stress the importance of getting routine eye exams because, you know, it's, it's never too early to prevent certain things. And sometimes when things are caught too late, it's, it's too late, unfortunately. So just making sure you're going at least one to two years, I usually recommend every year, unless you have sort of some sort of condition like diabetes or macular degeneration that is required for you to be seen more frequently. Well, that is fantastic information. Everyone, make sure you're doing your regular eye exams. Everyone, that was Dr. Alexa Hecht. Dr. Hecht, thank you so much again for joining us today. Thank you so much.